Hey guys, it's Silver Major Boy and welcome back to another video. So the coronavirus pandemic has locked down many cities and countries across the globe, including my country, India. And in today's video, I want to tell all of you guys watching this video what is the coronavirus, how it spreads, and what are the do's and don'ts regarding it. So let's start off with what is the coronavirus. Well, firstly, you have to understand that the coronavirus is not some single virus, but is actually a family of viruses. This family includes SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, Common Cold and a 2020 pandemic virus, COVID-19. The reason these viruses are called coronaviruses are because of their protein spikes that stick out and give the virus a crown-like appearance. The word corona is actually a Latin word whose meaning is crown. Now let's talk about how the virus spreads and affects your body. COVID-19 is an aerosol-based virus and it mainly travels to the droplets of an infected person when they sneeze or cough or when you touch an infected individual and then touch your eyes, nose and mouth. The virus can also spread through surfaces but we are not sure about the survival time of the virus on different surfaces. The coronavirus enters your body through the nose and makes its way towards its destinations which are the lungs and the intestine. The lungs are lined with billions of epithelial cells which act as a protective layer for your alveoli. Corona attaches itself to a receptor of your epithelial cell and injects its genetic material into the cell. Your cell accepts this new genetic material and carries out its task which is to copy the genetic material and mass produce it while being completely ignorant of what's happening. Your cell starts making a lot of copies of the rogue genetic material and reaches a critical state after which a self-destruct order is given due to which the cell wall breaks down and multiple copies of the virus are now released into the body, infecting new cells and repeating the same process. The number of infected cells in your lungs rise at an exponential rate in a matter of 10 days. In this time period, the virus really hasn't done any damage to your body, but Corona is now going to release a real nightmare on your body that nightmare being your own immune system our immune system is meant to protect us from foreign viruses and bacteria but if our immune system is not regulated it can cause more harm to us than good when our immune cells enter the lungs to combat the virus corona infects a few of them you see our immune system controls immune responses through tiny information proteins called cytokines when our immune cells are infected they go into a killing frenzy and start calling in more soldiers than required to fight the virus resulting in a waste of resources and causing damage. Two cells in particular cause a lot of damage. First are neutrophils which discharge enzymes that destroy healthy cells and infected cells. The other type are killer T cells which are ordered to do controlled suicide. Confused as they are, they start ordering the destruction of healthy cells. The more and more immune cells arrive, the more destruction they cause due to them being in a confused state. Sometimes it can get so bad that it can cause permanent damage to the lungs causing long-term respiratory disabilities. In most cases, the immune system slowly regains control. It kills the infected cells and prevents healthy cells from being infected by intercepting the virus and cleans the body. After this, the recovery begins. The majority of people catching the coronavirus will get through it with relatively mild symptoms. But many cases become severe or critical. So why does this exactly happen? In severe cases, millions of epithelial cells have died and with them the lungs protective lining is also destroyed. That means that the alveoli, which are tiny air sacs where exchange of gases takes place, can be infected with bacteria that aren't usually a big problem. Due to this, patients get pneumonia which could lead to difficulty in respiration or complete respiratory failure. Patients need ventilators to survive in this situation. The immune system has fought for weeks at full capacity and has made millions of antiviral weapons. And as thousands of bacteria rapidly multiply in the lungs, the system is overwhelmed. The bacteria enter through the blood and overrun the body. If this happens, death is very likely. Now the coronavirus is often compared to the flu but it is much more deadlier than the flu. Now we cannot determine the mortality rate of the virus in an ongoing pandemic but from the cases and data available to us, the mortality rate of the coronavirus stands at 3.4% which is much higher than the flu's mortality rate of 0.1%. What we do know is that it is more contagious than the flu. The R0 or the reproductive rate of the virus is 3, which means one infected person can infect 3 people, then those people can infect 9 more people, and like this, you get yourself a large amount of cases. Now, this pandemic can go in two ways. 
One is a fast pandemic in which we see an exponential rise in cases and the other is a slow pandemic in which number of cases don't increase exponentially. In a fast pandemic, a lot of people will die as a result of hospitals being overwhelmed as most people will not get the necessary medical attention they require to combat the virus. In a slow pandemic, however, very few people will die as hospitals will not be overwhelmed and people will get the necessary medical treatment. Now to achieve a slow pandemic, there are a few do's and don'ts. Firstly, you should always wash your hands with soap and water after coming from outside. The reason people tell you to do this is because soap kills the virus and in a pretty brutal way. You see, this is a soap molecule called micelle. The round circular part is hydrophilic which means it is attracted towards water and the tail is hydrophobic which means it is not attracted towards water. The cell wall of the coronavirus cell is made out of lipids due to which when we put soap on our hands, these micelle anchor themselves into the coronavirus cell. When we put our soap covered hands under water, the hydrophilic ends want to go with the water, but due to it being anchored, it needs to use excessive force to move out, which in turn rips the cell wall of the virus, due to which the virus cannot inject its genetic material into healthy cells, thus not allowing it to spread. Soap also makes the surface of your hands slippery, which doesn't allow the virus to stay on your hands. Secondly, wear an N95 rated mask and a pair of airtight goggles whenever you're going into a public area as these severely decrease the chance of you catching the virus. For those people who think that a face mask will not reduce the chance of infection, let, 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 let me please introduce you to the Czech Republic, where it is mandatory for you to wear a face mask due to which they've reduced their daily number of cases. I'll have a link down in the description below to the Czech Republic case study. Thirdly, practice social distancing. When I say social distancing, I mean not going to public areas, not traveling for non-essential reasons, and most importantly, avoiding public gatherings. The reason I say this is because firstly, you prevent yourself from catching the virus. And secondly, if you do catch the virus, you reduce the risk of passing on the infection to somebody else. Now let's talk about the don'ts regarding this situation. Firstly, do not self-medicate. If you think you've caught the virus, self-isolate yourself and observe your symptoms. If your symptoms start to worsen, go and get a test done. If you are in India, you can call on this helpline number to tell your symptoms. The reason why I'm not telling you guys to self-medicate is because a lot of times, self-medication leads to more harm than good. Secondly, don't hold essential medicinal drugs like chloroquine. Yes, it is true that chloroquine is being used for treating coronavirus patients, but you need to remember four things. Firstly, it is not a preventive measure. Secondly, it is being used only to treat the serious cases of coronavirus. Thirdly, only medical professionals are authorized to use the drug because they know what proportion of it is supposed to be given to the patient. And lastly, chloroquine is being used in conjunction with many other medicines as well to treat the patient. Using chloroquine on its own can be fatal. A man in Arizona died due to the consumption of chloroquine a few days ago. And the final thing to remember is do not believe information coming from Facebook and WhatsApp as these two sites are notorious for misinformation. Whatever news you read about COVID-19 on WhatsApp and Facebook, please verify it with the WHO guidelines and the guidelines of our very own health ministry. Well guys, I hope you understood how this virus spreads and how we can prevent its spread. I'll have links to the WHO website and the health ministry website down in the description below. And again, be safe guys and remember to wash those filthy, filthy hands. Because the power to change the course of this pandemic lies in your hands, literally and figuratively. As always, this is your boy Majoro Boy, signing off for today and I'll see you in the next one.